Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Good morning, students. This would be our fourth lecture of Computer Science A2. And today's topic would be file organization. In our daily life routine, when using the computer, we encounter a lot of different files. Each of these files are created through different softwares. And all those files have to be interpreted, accessed, stored using different softwares, different methods. Now we need to make those files because we want to use the data again and again. Files actually provide us with the auxiliary storage, the permanent storage. We can save our work in the form of files and then we can reuse them later on again. Each file has its own architecture. Uh, we would limit our discussion right now to uh, the binary files and the text files. As we have seen about the text files, those files are actually a collection of text characters according to some predefined coding scheme, uh, like the ones we had studied in chapter one of AS, like uh, ASCII and Unicode. And the characters were converted using those coding schemes and stored in the computer. A text editor can be used to create or edit those kinds of files. The next one is a binary file. A binary file is actually using its own internal coding to store the, the data. For example, we studied the calculation of signed values using tools complement method. And when you are storing an integer value, into a binary file, you store its tools complement. For example, if I am to store negative seven, the binary of seven would be triple one. And let's assume that I'm working in eight bits. So there will be five more zeros here. And writing that in tools complement will actually make this seven look like this. And that would be the representation of a negative seven in the form of a binary file. Now we did study different sorts of uh, binary representation like uh, we studied how the images are stored in the binary formats. Uh, using the color codes based on the color uh, variety of the image, how many color that image is going to contain. We also studied how a sound file is sampled in binary uh, using the sampling rate, mean taking the amplitude reading. The binary files are uh, created through their own specific programs and they can be accessed in their in the program that they are created in. The unit of a file is a record. A record comes together based on different fields. I hope you remember your database chapter. A collection of relevant field makes up a record. Like in the diagram you can see right now, a pupil ID is pointing to a record and that record is actually holding several fields in it and each field is actually holding a unit of information. And all those records come together to make up a file. Now, there's one more point we need to uh, be thinking about that there are some ways to organize the data inside our files. Files need to be organized in order to be accessed. How do we access the data 
in the files means can we access the data as it was recorded or can we uh, follow some sequence some order to uh, get to our data or can we just directly access the data item present in our file these different ways would be different uh, types of file file organization serial sequential and the direct access each one have its own advantages and disadvantages let's explore them in a bit of detail a serial file as the name suggests actually stores the data as it comes along a serial file can be uh, imagined like a logbook like a security logbook at your front door everyone who is entering is being recorded and there is no sequence except the chronological order the uh, uh, the way they are entering the time is being recorded but nothing else there is no order of ascending or descending there is no unique address where we are storing the names of people who are entering an inventory control program may use a serial file each time an item uh, is uh, taken out of the stock or brought into the stock it is recorded in a file and then later on we can update the master file that uh, and see what is the status of our inventory at the end of the day and if we need to search through a, a particular record in a serial file we need to start at the beginning and go through the file comparing each record with our search value until our desired record is found one way of showing the uh, working of serial file would be with this you see the items are just being appended being added at the end of the file as they came there is no sequence in them each item is just stored in the file each record is stored in the file as it came along now there is one problem we have discussed the uh, insertion of the record into the file we have discussed how the record is stored and how it is searched and now we need to discuss how it is deleted now when we need to delete a particular record from the file what actually happens is a duplicate of the file is created leaving that record behind for example if i want to uh, delete my second last record in the file whichever this item 27 is pointing that record i want to delete the serial file will copy each and every other record except that record number 27 create a temporary file and when it has copied all the items it will just delete the previous file and make this temporary file into my actual file let me explain that again that if you want to uh, delete a particular record in a serial file the contents of the file are copied into a temporary location and that record is not copied and when all the other records have been copied that temporary file becomes your actual file and the previous version is deleted now you can see why it is cumbersome because it is actually consuming the double of my memory means if my file was uh, maybe 6 megabytes so nearly 12 megabytes are needed in order for me to create a copy of that file now let's talk about sequential file in a sequential file data is stored in order of a key field for example let's assume that we are uh, entering student uh, data into the database and the student id is an integer key and we are going to actually use that student id 
to arrange the records in ascending or descending order. Now, what would happen if we want to enter or insert another record into a data structure which is already populated sequentially? We need to copy the records into a file up to a point where those new records based on the key has to be inserted. Then we insert the record at the new position and then remainder of the file is copied. And then obviously the original file is replaced with this new version. Let's understand that with a bit of an example. This is my sequential file. As you can see that these records may have been inserted different in a different order. Means maybe the record two came first and then maybe the record one came along and then maybe the record four came along and then maybe the record three came along. But when they were saved in the sequential file, the key value, the student ID or whatever the key value we picked up at that time, according to that, the records were arranged into the sequential file in a sequence of the key field. Now, if I want to insert another record, the record number five at this point where already I have the records up to nine. So contrary to the serial file where the record nine would have gone at the end of the file, the sequential file will find a proper place for this record based on the key value. Now, if we are following the uh, ascending order of key values, the five, the fifth record must be placed somewhere here between four and six. Now, A temporary file would be created and in that temporary file, one by one, each of the record will be copied up to a point where the actual location of the new record exists according to the order of the key value. Now this is important. So according to the order of the key value, this five should be placed here. So we would insert that and then the rest of the record would be copied and then this original file would be replaced by this temporary file that we have created. So again with the steps, when we need to insert items into sequential file, we need to follow the order of the key value. The key value is the serial number here or the student ID. You can imagine that to be a student ID. And when those IDs, those records were inserted, it is not necessary that they were inserted in this order, but they were sorted into this order to fit the criteria of the sequential file. Because the criteria the, uh, in my example is that they are arranged in ascending order of their serial numbers or student IDs, whatever you prefer to call it. And when they were coming along, so in ascending order, one, two, three, four, six, seven, nine was recorded, inserted into the file. You see there is an eight missing. We would not wait for it. We would keep our uh, order of sequence of the file but when another record needs to be inserted and its place is somewhere between the actual record according to the sequence then we would copy the uh, records up to the point where that new record has to be inserted and then we would copy the uh, other records and then we would just replace the original file with this new version of the file. When we need to search through this file, we again have to follow the sequential order, but it has one little benefit over the serial order. In serial file, we did not know the upper limit of the file. In, sequ in sequential order, since we are following some key value, we already know that we have some highest key value. And if I ask the file to search for record number 11, 
the file will not just go and start from the beginning one two three and four and then at the end tell me that 11 doesn't exist in the record this is the working of serial file the sequential file will first of all compare the value to the highest uh, key value already inserted and if my search value is greater than that because 11 is in fact greater than 9 and 9 is my inserted value the search algorithm with, would simply uh, tell me that this value is not existing in the file because the highest value we have is 9 and you, you are looking for 11. So this is a bit of advantage that a sequential file have over the serial file. Uh, again, it largely depends on the programmer, how he programs to uh, search through the file. Moving on. In the start of my discussion, I introduced a concept of a record structure. You might remember the composite data type that we studied. And in that composite data type, we made records consisting of the basic built-in data types. Now, if you see, if you look at this table, this table is actually telling you with a very specific information. Before I start explaining direct access file, I need to talk about the record structure that I have fixed the size of my record. Now, why did I have to do that? Let's compare this fixed size with the text file. You remember that in the text files, each line had an end of line character and at the end of the file, we had an end of file character. So we did not worry about okay, what is the length of the line of uh, uh, each record. But now we need to use a way in which each record have to be of fixed length. So we actually can predict the location of the record based on its serial number. Now we have seen that in sequential file, we can arrange the uh, records according to the key values and building onto that concept, we are using a direct access file based on a fixed record structure. Now in this you can see the student ID uh, according to uh, the data type table that you remember from chapter 30. VP.NET gives that four bytes to that integer and then for the name I had allowed 20 characters and you remember that each char variable consumes two bytes. That would mean 40 bytes here and 20 more characters for the father name. So that would mean 40 more bytes here. And then 64 characters for the address. And that would mean 108 bytes here. Now, if I add them all together, the, the total number of bytes occupied by one record would be 192. Now, when I'm storing my first record, that is going to be stored at byte zero. Obviously from zero to 191 bytes will be consumed by the first record because that's the fixed length that I have allocated to my record. Now, the second record would be starting from 192. The third one would be starting from 384. The fourth one would be starting from 574. And the ninth record would be at 1536th byte. Now you can see a pattern developing here. Now you can see that if I have the number of record, the key value that I was talking about, I can use the formula to calculate where exactly my record is going to be stored. 
this is n minus 1 into size of my record. Based on this, I can directly access my record stored in my direct access file. Let's review that. I have fixed size of my record. I know which record I'm looking for because in the sequential file we have established that we can use a key value to uh, arrange our records into a particular order. So that would mean that would mean that I can exactly know at which byte my data is going to be. So that's one way of looking at the direct access file. This would be the formula. The address of the nth record would be the address of beginning of the file plus n minus 1 into the record size. The beginning of my file was byte 0, so I did not have to add this. But I hope you get the idea that using this concept, we can access the records directly. Now there is another way of looking at the direct access files, which is through hashing. Now sometimes direct access files are also referred to as random access files. The word random here means that we can directly jump onto whichever record that we like. We can directly go to whichever record that we want to go to. Ideally, it means that we can directly go to any record that we want to go. In this way, we are imagining that the records are inserted on the specific places and retrieved from those exact specific places using a mathematical calculation, which I'm going to call hash function. A hash function would be a formula. I'm going to use that formula on a key value and that formula is going to spit out some index, some byte number, some subscript of the array and then I can use that subscript to store my data inside it. Now, and when I'm going to access that record again, I'm going to need the same hashing function. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to use the hashing function uh, which takes the ASCII value of the entered strings and take the modulus and give the remainder. Since the data structure I'm using in this example is going to be a string array, so that string array is going to uh, be containing eight different values. And the hash function is that if I want to enter this record that you might remember from the previous example, uh, previous slide, sorry. So this record has student ID, name, father name and address. I'm going to apply my hashing algorithm on only the name field, this field over here. Okay. Now the name field is where I'm going to use my hashing algorithm, my formula to calculate the address. Let me show you the formula again. If I want to store Ali, A would be 65, small L would be 108 and small I would be 105. Adding them all together would give me 278 and modulus with 8 would give me 6. So I know that Ali should be stored at index number 6. And when I need to access this particular record again, I would again insert Ali into this formula and I will get 6 back and I will move on to that record. So consider an array of eight string values and the values that I'm going to use in this example are these supposed names and 
this is how my array is going to look like from 0 to 7, 8 string memory locations. So when I put Umar through my formula that I just have shown you in the previous slide, it is going to, uh, u is going to be 85, then m is going to be 109, and a is going to be 97, and r is going to be 114. The addition of that would result in 405, and modulus of 8 would give me 5 as a remainder. You can do this calculation at your own. I hope it is quite simple for you to do. But this is when you are doing this, you are actually hashing out a memory location which is being used to store this record. Then we have Z. When you put through put Z through the hashing function, it is going to be uh, the modulus is going to be zero. So this would be the index, uh, the location where Z is going to be stored. And when you put Ali through the hashing algorithm, the uh, remainder would be six. So Ali would be at sixth location. Now let's see what happens when I store, try to store my name here. Now, so S is 83 capital S, H is 104, E is 101, R is 114, A is 97, and Z is 122. So this actually gives me the total of 621. The answer of the addition of the ASCII characters of my name is 621. And mod 11 sorry, mod 8 is going to give me the answer 5. But the problem here is that 5 is already consumed. So what my algorithm is going to do is that it is going to look for the next available slot. It wanted to store this record at 5, but 5 was already consumed, so it moved to the next slot. But the next slot was already consumed, so it moved to the next to that. And that slot was free. So, that entry would be stored here. Now, this gives actually rise to one more thing. I told you that ideally in the direct access files, we want to go to that location directly where our record needs to be, for example, if I wanted to look for Z, I would directly go to location zero. But if I want to look for Shiraz, so I cannot go to location seven directly. I would first go to location five through the direct search. And then from this point onward, I would have to perform a linear search, a serial search. I would check this value, it will not match. I would check the next one it will not match and then I would check the next one and this value is going to be matched. So using the direct access file actually limit the time of our search because uh, we can pinpoint the location where the file record was originally stored but sometimes collisions may have occurred that the hashing algorithm have uh, given us duplicate values and in that case our value moved to the next available slot. So from that point onward we have to perform a serial search in order to get to our value. So based on these uh, slides and the discussion we had you may now be able to pinpoint the merits and demerits of serial and sequential and random access file. You have seen that a serial file is going to consume double of its size when it is going to copy because it has to create a temporary file when it is going to delete a record from it. You saw the sequential file is doing the same thing when it is actually entering a new record into it 
the sequential file was creating a whole copy of itself and then it was uh, replacing the original copy with the newer version and the process of deletion for the sequential file is just as same as the serial file so i did not mention that when we are talking about the direct access file so we have to make sure that the record length is constant in my example the record length was 192 and maybe if i'm giving 20 characters to the name only six characters or seven characters of that would be used so there will always be some bytes unused in the example you might have noticed that when i was populating my array so there was some parts which was empty ideally when uh, the values keep on coming this would be filled but i had given 20 characters to the first name and i'm only using four uh, characters here four here three here and uh, six in the next name so that means i am actually wasting some of the bytes but as i have shown you both ways of accessing uh, direct access files one based on the hashing algorithm and one based on the length of the record so uh, the search through a direct access file is a lot faster than the sequential access or the serial ex uh, serial file and in our day to day uh, operations the speed the time that our queries take to return the data to us it really matters to us now i hope that would clear up your concepts of these three different types of files and i would see you again in the next lecture about the fixed point and floating point representation uh till then i'm looking forward to your questions and be sure to uh, solve the assignment i'm uh, sending your way be safe allah hafiz